we're gonna go through our ingredients. For this recipe, we're gonna be using six ounces of gluten-free flour. It can be any mix you want, any brand you want. We're gonna also be using a quarter teaspoon of sanctum gum, which I have already mixed, as you can see, in the flour. A quarter cup of cocoa powder, one teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, they're both mixed in this little, one cup of sugar, two-thirds of a cup of sour cream. This is going to help keep the cupcake moist. We're going to be using six tablespoons of oil. It can be vegetable oil. I am going to be using coconut oil in my recipe. And you're going to need also two eggs. They have to be large, two large eggs. You're also going to need cupcake liners. It can be four mini cupcakes like this tray or it can be just standard size cupcake liners also you're gonna need a cupcake tray it can be four minis or it can be the standard size um, you don't need a stand mixer but it's really helpful and again for your recipe you actually don't need fruits uh, but you can add them if you want in this case I'll be using cherries and you also need red food coloring it can be gel, it can be natural food coloring like beet juice before we start mixing our ingredients we should turn the oven on and set it to 350 degrees also we should make sure that one of our oven racks is in the middle or as close to the middle in my case my oven has five levels I tend to put it in the second level from below. Now we're gonna be mixing our batter. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is mixing our dry ingredients. I'm adding here the flour that I already mixed with the xanthan gum. This is the baking powder and the baking soda. This is the cocoa powder. And the only thing we're going to be leaving out of this mix is the sugar for now. Just mix it all and set it aside. On our mixer bowl, we're going to add the oil and we're going to add to that sugar. Let it mix until you see that it's well combined. We're gonna be adding to that the sour cream and the eggs. Adding one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. Once your wet ingredients are well combined, let's add our dry ingredients. Start your mixer at a slow speed so it combines slowly all of the ingredients. Don't forget to scrape the sides of the bowl whenever you have a chance. Once all of your ingredients are well combined, we will be adding the food coloring. As you can see, this is currently the color I have in the batter after I have added the food coloring. Your color might be different, don't worry, usually the, the deep red comes through after you bake the cupcake. Now we're going to start filling our 
cupcake trays since our batter is ready. The first thing we're going to do is fill some of the cupcake trays. You can decide whether you're going to be using the mini cupcakes or the standard cupcake. It's up to you and what you already have in your kitchen. I'm going to be doing both so I can show you how much batter you should be adding in both cases. I like using um, bigger cupcake liners for the mini cupcakes because uh, it's easier to overfill them and then they will spill if they, you did that. So after you have the cupcake liners in the trays, go ahead and add your cupcake batter. Just make sure you're not going more than halfway unless you have a big cupcake liner. For the bigger cupcakes, um, again, don't fill them more than halfway. So as you can see, this is how currently my cupcake liners are looking. In the case of the mini cupcakes, they're kind of filled almost to the top, but because I have a very large liner that comes outside. You should have it more like this one. This one is one uh, three quarters of the size of the real cupcake tray. In the case of the bigger cupcakes, I'm sticking to half, half the size of each space. Uh, because this way they'll grow just enough to have a little dome and then we'll just core them out If you don't have cupcake liners, you can always just grease your cupcake trays with butter or a little bit of um, Baking oil they come in cans you can find them at the grocery store in the baking aisle Now that your trays have been filled, put them in the middle rack and push them all the way to the back of your oven. Also, set a timer for 15 minutes. Even though the recipe says 18 minutes for baking, it's better to set a timer for less just to make sure your cupcakes don't burn if you're not used to your oven fire settings. Now we're going to start mixing our frosting. The first thing we'll be doing is sift the powdered sugar. We will be using one cup of sugar. We will be using six tablespoons of unsalted butter, preferably at room temperature. We'll also be using eight ounces of cream cheese. Mix these two together until they're well combined. Slowly start adding your powdered sugar and make sure that you stop every now and then and scrape the sides and bottom of the bowl so we're sure it's all getting well blended. Once you have mixed all the sugar with the butter and cream cheese, add your milk and the vanilla. Again, remember to scrape the sides of the bowl and the bottom. I will insert my metal tester into the center of the cupcakes. Once they come out clean, I know that my cupcakes are ready. I set them out on a tray so they can cool down. Once they're cool, I will cut them in the center and core them out. After you have taken the inside of the cupcake, add a little bit of cream 
cheese frosting. Add some of the pieces of the fruit, in my case it's cherries. And remember to close it with more cream cheese. Grab again the top that you took out when you were to core the cupcake and put it on the top. Do the same with all of the cupcakes that you want to fill with your frosting or fruits. Now that you've filled your cupcakes, we will start frosting them. For the big cupcakes, I will just use a circular tip and press until they build up as much as I want to. You can do the same. For the mini cupcakes, I will be using a star tip and will be doing a rose in the top. Start in the center and go around. Do the same with the rest of your cupcakes and feel free to decorate them in any way you prefer. After you have frosted them, you can decorate them with cherry juice or the fruit of your choice if it provides juice, sprinkles, some of the insides of the cupcake, pieces of the fruit, or even sugar. Uh, there's different color sugar, so just get creative or just you can leave them without any kind of decoration on top. The frosting itself is just good. I hope you enjoyed this class and I look forward to seeing your cupcakes in the project. Upload your pictures and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment sections. Bye!